What is going on, Yon Nation? So I just finished No Coincidence, um, Cyberpunk 2077's first novel about 30 minutes ago. And so I wanted to get on here, give you guys my review, my first impressions. Um, I did get the book about two weeks early. So big shout out to Orbit Books and CDPR for sending that um, early. So I was able to kind of read it at a leisurely pace. That being said, I did devour it. I, I read the, the book in totality. Um, about 100 pages a day, which is pretty fast for me. I'm a, I'm a slow reader uh, and I have a lot of things to say about it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, no coincidence. So if you guys are not aware, this is a new cyberpunk novel from Rafał Kosik. Um, he's an acclaimed science fiction writer in Poland. I'm not wasn't familiar with his books prior, but um, yeah. So this is essentially a story about a heist. So um, for those of you who liked edge runners and liked the kind of crew dynamic, you're gonna get a lot of this with no coincidence. So this is kind of a, a slap together crew. They've all been blackmailed into working with each other to steal um, this this artifact, um, this piece of cyberware. They don't really know what it is uh, initially in the story. So they're just kind of stealing this item um, for a fixer known as Warden. And as per usual for a cyberpunk setting, things go uh, astray, they go a little bit uh, frenetic and intense, uh, and uh, it's a little bit of a slow burn initially, so it took me about, um, I'd say 125 pages before it starts to get really juicy and things start to ramp up. But, um, you know, the ascent towards your understanding of, you know, how all these different characters got blackmailed into starting this heist and kind of the snowball effect of this first heist um, is is a unique one and it's uh it's really cool to see all the different people within this crew their unique backstories so you'll have um, Milena, which is like a, she comes from a corpo setting you have like borg who's kind of like this this street dude um, you have Zor, who is kind of this guy who has a mysterious background. And then you have like Ron, who is a Ripper Doc, and Albert, who is a Netrunner. So you get all these different uh, archetypes of people, their unique backstories. You learn a little bit more about them as the book goes on. And they like to jump from story to story. So it kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger um, after every like little story beat within this specific character's world after they kind of go their separate ways after this heist. And... Things, again, they snowball out of control. You guys are familiar with how things work in Night City. There's no quote unquote good endings in Night City. So I really enjoyed reading it now. There is a voiced over version with Sheremy Lee, who is the voice of female V. Click, click, click. Didn't fit. Like everything else. Like right now. He wasn't supposed to be here didn't want to be. Squeezed between a wall and a dumpster in the goddamn pouring rain. Who knows? Could be useful. The rain. Reduces visibility. Provides a little natural cover. Yeah. The rain could stay. I would recommend that you guys listen to the audio version of this book. Um, I was actually thinking about it and because the, the story does jump around a lot, uh, it can it can get a little get, bit confusing. So if you get that context from someone who's doing a voiceover who knows the story, um, I think you might get a little bit more enjoyment from it. And obviously she has a very nice voice. Um, she plays female V. If you played female V in the cyberpunk game, it's going to feel like a natural fit when you listen to um, No Coincidence with her voiceover. I do wish that they would have done the voiceover with like her as the narrator and then each unique character as someone else that they've hired, but obviously it takes a lot of resources, you know, that would take a lot of work. So uh, regardless, check out the, the voiceover version. So the things I liked, let's go over some of the pros and cons. Um, they use real locations in the game. So if you've played the game, uh, if you're familiar with Night City, you will kind of instinctually understand where all these events are taking place, which is kind of nice. There are some familiar characters that you meet in the Cyberpunk 2077 base game. They aren't the main characters, but uh, you know, it's a little bit of a fan service there uh, and, and they play like integral roles in the story so um, it's nice to see those characters kind of woven in. Uh, I imagine this takes place before the events of Cyberpunk 2077 just based off of that I'm not going to spoil anything but uh, that's my, my guess I don't know if it explicitly says in the book or not but uh, my guess is that it uh, happens before. 
Another thing I really liked is you get to see kind of a microcosm of each individual life, their respective roles, how they live in Night City. I know from based off of Edge Runners, people wanted to see kind of like a cyberpunk anthology, and this kind of will scratch that itch a little bit of understanding、um, how people operate from, say, a corporate background. There's a police officer in the story, which we get a, a little bit of insight into. There's a Ripper doc. There is a Netrunner. So you get a little bit of insight into their like individual stories, separate from the other characters, which is nice. And then they kind of all aggregate together, and their their、um, stories get interwoven, which obviously always makes for like a really cool narrative because there's a lot of different moving pieces. Very interesting story. If I had to compare it to Edge Runners and Cyberpunk 2077,、um, if I had to say to someone who is completely new to the genre. What should you dive into first? Would it be the game? Would it be the Netflix series, or would it be the book? It would be hard to kind of recommend one that's a standout over the other. I think Edge Runners is still probably the standout, just because、um, it's a Netflix series. It's easily accessible,、uh, but no coincidence is right up there with Cyberpunk 2077、um, in terms of the narrative, the main story. Now, I do feel like、um, things crossed over a little bit too much with the Cyberpunk 2077 main story. Um, I would have liked to see this story take a completely diff- different route、uh, and talk about things that are less explored in the Cyberpunk universe. And you'll kind of understand what I mean when I say that there are some quests in Cyberpunk 2077 that seem to have a lot of crossover with kind of the narrative of no coincidence, which is fine,、um, and a lot of people are going to enjoy that. But I kind of wish that they, you know, they had an opportunity to explore something completely different. Which they didn't, and I'm not even specifically talking about the heist because things in the cyberpunk universe seem to always revolve around heists. It was true for No Coincidence. It's true for Edge Runners. It's true for the Cyberpunk 2077 main storyline. I'm actually not t- talking about that, and I don't want to go too much further into what I mean because that goes into、uh, spoiler territory. But、um, if you do read it, you'll you'll kind of understand what I mean by that. And、uh, I kind of do wish that they took a different route. But again, it was nice to see that crossover with. Some of the potential side quests in Cyberpunk 2077, and there's future implications for Orion as well. So that was really cool to see. Now, some of the reasons why characters do the things that they do,、um, getting an insight into why they were blackmailed into this heist, didn't really land for me. But that was just one element of the story, it, albeit it's a big element of the story. But、uh, as you start reading and as you get into the, the story of it, you'll kind of understand that those things were were not really like the focal aspect of the story. It's about how things kind of snowball and get out of hand,、uh, and then the reasoning is kind of like secondary. But to me, it didn't really land for some of the characters. There was one character in particular where you learn about why she got into the the heist in the first place. Um, and to me, it was a little bit illogical. So I wish they would have spent a little bit more time with that backstory. I didn't feel a particular connection to any of the specific characters, but there are so many of them that it's less to do about the characters and their backstory and more to do with like their overarching stories that come together and they kind of,、uh, you know, create this story based off of their their branching stories. Um, another thing I really liked is the camaraderie、uh, angle of things. You have a bunch of people who don't know each other slapped together for a heist. They get to know each other at the same level that we're getting to know these characters. So it was really cool to kind of be a part of that camaraderie. You're kind of like a fly on the wall,、um, understanding each of the characters, their backstories,、uh, and things like that. So I really enjoyed that that part of the the book. Again, I'm trying not to go into too much of spoiler territory for you guys, but hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea what to expect. Do go check out the the first、um, chapter of the novel is released is released on the Orbit Books website.、Um, there is also、uh, a snippet of the voiceover for Sharmi Lee.、Um, I'll I will either have played this earlier in the video or I'll play it right now. But do go listen to that and kind of make your judgment based off of that. There is a soft cover version. There's a hard cover version.、Uh, in my opinion, you should get the book if you're a cyberpunk fan. If you're not a cyberpunk fan, I'm not sure if this is the one that's gonna make you、uh, a diehard. But I think if you're an already already an existing fan, definitely get the book. Add it to your collection if you're a collector. Read the book. Enjoyable experience. It's an enjoyable read.、Um, I would probably give it either a 3.5 or a 4 out of 5 stars. Which is,、uh, you know, a decent rating. It's it's up there. So definitely check it out. I'll probably have links in the pinned comment or the description.
Uh, and if you have already read it, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. Definitely check out the book, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.